and basketball talk. R.I.R. badges in their process wall. Hello, folks. Welcome back to Free Speech. We're here at the Stand Up New York Labs in the glorious Upper West Side with all the rich people. And we're here with another incredibly rich, rich billionaire heir mm-hmm. to the Johnson & Johnson throne. And she just pulled so in much a, money, I'm just... a Lamborghini. And you just you let yeah. that get towed? You don't care where you park? I can get another one anytime. It's fine. Uh, I am just kidding. Uh, I'm here with a politically active artist, Heather Marie Scholl. I don't know this woman at all. Uh, I saw her on the street uh, near my house. She was putting up this sticker, and it says, It's from one white person to another. It's on us to end white supremacy. I thought that was very interesting, and uh, saw her at a coffee shop and said I'd love to have you on the show to explain this sort of mentality behind the sticker. And here she is. So... Heather Mary? Is it Heather Mary or Heather Marie? Heather Marie. Heather Marie. I mean, I just go by Heather, but let's do written, Heather. I do Heather Marie. What is your ethnic background? Is there any Scottish in there? Um, no, your biggest ones I know are German and, uh, and Irish. German and Irish, yeah, huh? English. Yeah. Heather always makes me think of the the hills of Scotland and the fucking Heather, <laughs> the beautiful My folks purple always, Heather. I I do like some Heather. But okay, okay, so let's stop horsing around and get down to brass tacks. What does it mean? What, how do we end white supremacy? Well, first of all, what is the white supremacy you're talking about? White supremacy infiltrates every part of our lives. Um, I tend to use that term rather than racism because racism is really just white supremacy. It's the elevation of white characteristics and the normalization of our experience um, and our lives. And Can black people be racist? Um, I would say that people of color can be supporters of white supremacist ideas. Okay. What so. if what if uh, black people don't like Chinese people? Um, people have biases all over, and some of that is because of the biased society that we're raised in. Um, what I really consider white supremacy and structural racism is the fact that there is power behind it. Oh. Yes, you can be biased against a group of people, but do you have influence power and influence over how their lives are lived on a regular basis okay so it's about power so whites Mm -hmm. are really the only racist because they're the only ones powerful enough to do anything about it like not give a black guy a job black people can hate white people but they can't do anything about it not really no don't they kill them on (laughs) mass on mass no no that is uh, one of the great myths that we've created about how often black folks kill white folks how often do they kill white folks? Um, I don't have the numbers, but I believe I read recently it was somewhere around 10 to 15 percent of murders committed by black folks are white. Well, well then what are all the murders? What are most murders with blacks? Most mur- well, most murders are white on white. Right, just because of the numbers, the demographics yeah. of the country. Yeah, of course. But how many murders, do you not have a rough idea of how many blacks kill other blacks? I don't have those numbers. I think it's 6,000 a year. I mean, there's one a day in, in East New York. Know. Anyway, sorry. I mean, that's not... So I thought it was interesting, though, for a second there, you were saying, I heard uh, that a lot of times when people of color are, uh, have a bias towards a group, it's actually white people's fault because they're living in this country that is so racist, they end up picking mm-hmm. up these racist traits. Of course, yeah. So when blacks I mean, are racist, that's... it's because whites have brainwashed them into being racist. Yeah. I mean, that's the structure of our society, and... Um, I mean, I think about beauty standards a lot just because I am a fashion and aesthetic type person. And um, so often you see the elevation of white beauty, like white female beauty. And um, people of all races suffer from that. I see. So that's why when, when black women straighten their hair, of course, they're yeah. trying to be white. I would not put it in that those terms, but um, they're suffering from a beauty standard that is white centered i see but they seem to do that all over the world i mean even in africa you see every woman well some of it is there is a long tradition um in african and african-american culture that hair is a form of art and that is a form of self-expression and that has gone on for a very long time so it's part of that but um then the the white beauty standards also play a role so it's not possible that long blonde hair is just more aesthetically appealing than a no. little fro. No. Like if a we've, Martian we've landed here that. and he was looking at a at you know uh, Bill Cosby's wife, 
and he was looking at Farrah Fawcett, he, he would, would be say, fascinated by the difference. And he would say, and both, most most, if you don't, if you take away um, the power structure, then it's simply about being fascinated by difference. And there, there's nothing wrong with being fascinated by other cultures and differences. And I've um, read some stories of people who had that experience growing up, that they lived in places other than the United States um, and in communities where difference was just normal. And they learned whiteness as part of difference rather than as a power structure. So in America do. today, everyone is taught that white is the best. And if you're not white, you suck. In subtle ways, yeah. I don't think most people could articulate that. That's not something that it's most systemic, people are. systemic, right? Mm -hmm. I love that word. Uh, but if you look at college campuses today, for example, it seems like the opposite is happening. And everything is about white maleness is evil and the white male patriarchy is bad. I mean, I would. it looks to me like the opposite brainwashing is going on on college campuses. And if you look at the politically correct left, uh, the New York Times and everyone but Fox really seems to be pushing people of color. Like, look at hands up, don't shoot. Yeah. That exploded, but he didn't have his hands up. Did he? Who were you talking Mike about? Mike Brown. Um, there's been multiple perspectives on what happened there. I won't really say so, for sure one way or the, or the other. Um, oh, so you still think he had his hands up? I'm, I'm not going to state an opinion about that. Um, okay. But because I don't, I don't think that's the important part of what's happened then or what happened, what's happened around so the, the country. So the truth isn't irrelevant. It's more about the message. I That's a tricky statement. <laughs> I don't understand why we don't care about the details. We just love the narrative so much. We just sort of plow through what actually happened. Um, when you nitpick what somebody did as a way to justify the violence committed on them, then you're blaming the victim in that sense. Um, and you're not looking at... So it's blaming the victim to notice that he didn't have his hands up? I'm not, I'm not saying that specifically. Oh, okay. I, I'm just commenting on the practice of nitpicking what somebody did or didn't do. I see the same thing around rape victims. Is like If you had just done X, Y, and Z, then this wouldn't have happened to you. If you had just held your hands up, if you had just been a little bit less threatening of a black person, then you wouldn't have been murdered. But yeah. it's more about the systemic racism around it and the violence committed on those communities and how we perceive black maleness right. as threatening. No matter what he's doing, it's perceived as threatening. But uh, my understanding with rape is we're pretty fucking hard on rapists. When we catch them, they go to jail for 15 years. And when I think of... But we have a pretty heavy burden of proof as well. And oftentimes it's one person against the other. And if the, the rapist has more power, then that adds other extra... Compl Oh, so if the rapist is a white male, he can usually get out of it? Um, not always, no. But when there's more power involved, more influence, resources than the victim, then it is harder to get a conviction. I understand what you're saying. I'm just having trouble thinking of examples. Like when I think of, when you say, hands up, don't shoot, it doesn't matter if he had his hands up or not. But I just see that whole thing as fraud. I mean, Michael Brown reached for the gun, reached into the car, and he got shot. He had a... He was arrogant and he thought he could beat up cops. Or with Trayvon, we took that to court. We saw that he was beating up George Zimmerman after several warnings, but people still run with the narrative with the hood up. And when you use rape as an example, I think of other rape frauds like Mattress Girl, like the UVA of, hoax. Of course, there's been people who falsely claim um, that they've been abused in various ways, but that is a distraction from the real people who have suffered but from i issues. would argue the opposite i think these cases trivialize the real people who have suffered and they mock them almost i mean we're at a point now where they say one in four women will experience sexual assault in college mm -hmm. that's clearly a myth no it's not but one in four is is that you don't have that for any other crime in the world like you go to a ride in detroit there's not one in four have you, have you acts of been vandalism a woman before have, have I you, what? Have you been a woman before? Have you experienced what it's like to be a woman in this world and talk to other women without the presence of males? Because when there are no males around, you hear these stories. You hear that there are one in four, that this is not a made up statistic. One in four is in, to of get that statistic insane. Of course up it's insane. to that, they've included drunk sex and sex that you regret afterwards. I think 90% of my sex is drunk sex. Am I a rapist now? They just had a woman who was at, trying to join the Mile High Club. She was having sex in a plane. She was shit-faced. 
And when they took, they arrested her. They took her down. They arrested both of them. And she was trying to kick the shit out of the the cops, the whatever airline security. Uh, if having sex drunk is rape, then she should have been free, and that guy should have been prosecuted. I don't. I don't know anything about that case, but, yeah, but um, just I mean, treat it as a hypothetical then. <laughs> uh, alcohol does inhibit your ability to say yes, and there are many instances where. Uh, men and other abusers have used that to their advantage. Right. Okay. So. Well, if we're talking about college campus, then why wouldn't these women go to the police? Like, are you familiar with Mattress Girl? Mm-hmm. What do you, what do you think happened there in reality? Um, I take her experience for it, that um, there were substances involved and she was non-consensually forced to have sex. Well, she was having, her contention is she was having nice vaginal sex and then he put it in her ass and she said, stop. Yeah. But afterwards, the police, she went to the police with this and they saw her texts and they saw her basically stalking him afterwards saying, I want you to fuck me in the ass and uh, let's go on a date. I want to see you again. I mean, tons and tons of Facebook messages and texts. Does that refute her story? Um... I think that we deal with trauma in very different ways, and sometimes that anger comes out in bizarre situations like that, um, where you think it'll be better if you take it out on this person and by harassing them with strange text messages. Um, I mean, she was also young, and she was trying to deal with her emotional world in many different ways at once. I, I, the way you're clinging to this narrative, it reminds me of a, a study that said when people are confronted with data that contradicts their beliefs, they mm. become more steadfast in their mm. beliefs. Yeah, no, I've noticed that. Well. I mean, this guy is suing the school. <laughs> Women do not court their rapists. They don't say, fuck me in the ass after they've been anally raped. They go to court. They get the police to arrest this guy. She's clearly a liar. But because people like you empower her, they end up running with this lie. And it makes me mad as a, more of a feminist than most feminists, because it trivializes the woman who was attacked with a knife in an alleyway by a guy and but, raped I and mean, had I to go on that, AIDS medication after. Right. Those instances are horrifying. But what I... My issue with um, taking apart her story a bunch is that most instances of rape and sexual assault are with somebody you know. It's with somebody you went on a date with. It has lots of gray lines. It's not a stranger on the street. Most of the time it's somebody already in your life who well, has crossed that boundary. So many... And so it gets a real, really sticky when you start tearing, taking apart the actual events. And yeah, I think... No, I, it doesn't. I think, That's I think called after, justice, Heather. I think after an assault, it is quite questionable to send messages asking for anal sex. Yeah, but I would also say that like devaluing somebody's no mid-sex is often, is, is frequent. And, um, and it just, it gets tricky when you know somebody and when you are consenting to part of the, the interaction, but, but not all of we it. We can't question these, these vic victims. That's what justice is. By not questioning the victim, we've ruined this guy's life. That's why he's suing the school. I mean, we had a case recently where a woman decided, you look like someone who raped me, so I want you out of here. And he had to curtail his behavior in, in campus. Yeah. Is that good? No. <laughs> or with the UVA hoax, I'm reading the story, and before it exploded, I go, I go, wait a minute. They threw her down on a glass coffee table and then raped her amongst the shards? Everyone would have been shredded. Mm -hmm. But the story has so much momentum because people love these evil white male. They love the shitting on the white supremacy that they just run with it. And it's on the front page of the Rolling Stone. Mattress Girl is on the front page of New York Mag. It seems mm -hmm. like there's this massive demand for rapists that's not being met. And if you look at the data, well, I'm afraid blacks are raping wildly disproportionately to their representation in the population. I mean, if you look at the number of white men who rape black women and the number of black men who rape white women, it's startling. What are those numbers? Do you have them? Uh, I don't have them on me, but the, the white men who rape white women is so inconsequential, it's hard to quantify. It's something like eight. And then the black men who rape white women is in the hundreds. And that may be based on who's reporting, because... I, I think I've... you would prefer if it was the other way around, because it would fit your sort of plantation narrative. <laughs> 
I'm not trying to make it fit a plantation narrative. Well, um, I just don't understand why but I, someone I, who cares about rape can ignore statistics. I know it's that like you pick and choose. As, as a white woman who's talked to many other white women and is a survivor myself, um, that it they white women are often more likely to report a black assault. They are more likely to highlight that violence and see that as violence. Whereas oftentimes the, this isn't coming out quite how I want it to right now, so. So but. white woman will get raped by a black man. They'll freak out and make sure it gets on the books, but they'll get raped by a UVA uh, jock with blonde hair and go, that wasn't really rape or no one would believe me or he's too powerful. Is that where we're at? <laughs> That's a psychotic world you've painted. I mean, <laughs> it is close though. No, it I'm, ain't. Mm? No, it ain't. Mm. You see, the dominant narrative is your sticker. The dominant narrative in America is white people are evil, white people suck, we should be ashamed of ourselves. And I don't think we should be ashamed of ourselves. I think that we should take responsibility for the system that we've created. The best system in the world? We do not have the best system Who in the world. Who has a better system? <laughs> there are many European countries that have, are much better off oh, than Oh, you us. mean like the European countries with a higher density of whites, like Northern Europe? Uh, that's one way to phrase it, I guess. You don't mean Turkey. No. You, you don't mean Eastern Europe no. with the communists. So the only time you can come up with a system that's better than America, it's a country that's more white than America. I don't I, understand. I don't, I don't know what to say to that. So. Like, I, I just want to know where the data is that supports this universe of white supremacy. Is it because whites are doing well? <laughs> Um, that makes it sound like whites are doing well because um, they earned it and they did all the right things rather than we've built this country on a system for hundreds of years that that allows whites to do well. We have generations that have supported our success and we have taken away support from communities of color. So that is why communities of color are not doing well in America. It's not because of, white people are doing so well for themselves. We, we're just such a great people. I mean, I'm not... So the reason whites are, are doing well is because we cheated. Yeah. But if you look at the data of Asians, for example, you will find way more Asian privilege than there is white privilege. Asians make way more money than whites. They're way more educated than whites. They are less likely to experience any kind of crime than whites are. They're less likely to die at work than whites are. I mean, the list goes on. Yeah, they suffer from a different sort of um, racial stereotyping. Well, they don't suffer. They're kicking her ass. Asian, everything you can say about white privilege is more true with Asian privilege. No one grabs their it's purse when it... still pigeonholes them. Pardon? It still pigeonholes them. Pigeonholes them as successful? I don't think anyone minds being pigeonholed like that. Hey, Mr. No, Successful, why don't you go worse. drive a nice car? It's not near as harmful as how black folks are stereotyped, certainly. Okay, so uh, why don't you start at the top then and let's try to dismantle Asian privilege. Asian privilege, I wouldn't call it Asian privilege. Well, it fits all the criteria of white male privilege. What do you mean by that? Uh, they get better jobs. They get better educations. They don't, no one sees them as threatening. Uh... Everything that you can say that whites mm. cheated to get is pr more prevalent in an Asian society. Okay, let's drop yeah. that. I guess it's not going anywhere. <laughs> uh, but that reminds me of when people say that we live in a sex... Would you say we live in a sexist society? Yeah. Um, I don't understand that. Why not? Well... Men are more likely to die on the job. They're more likely to commit suicide. They're more likely to get beat up. They're more likely to get raped. Uh, they're more likely to have their opinions valued, to be able to have powerful positions and not have their bodies be the primary subject whenever they are well-known and doing trying to do something with their lives. Well, that's a good point, finally. Uh, yeah, we do analyze the beauty of women quite often, but that's a meter that we've been using for a quarter of a million years to develop attraction. I mean, women grew tits because they were, we started to walk upright and they said, I got to attract men to my front. I'm going to put an ass on my chest. Also to feed children. 
Right, but you don't need big tits to feed children. No. Uh, Genetic variation. So attraction is an integral part of it. And when you're attractive, it shows that you care. I mean, you've adorned yourself to yep. be attractive. Fashion is one of my forms of expression. And women are better at beauty than men. Men aren't beautiful. Have you seen a bag? <laughs> I, men can be beautiful, certainly. I was I've seen a, them adorned quite well. I was talking about this on another show, but I was at a strip club, and I find strip clubs to be a real sort of a cathedral of, of worship for women. It's seen as a sexist place, and I think when women go there, they think everyone's going to be going, ha, 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 look at that fucking naked bitch. Ha, <laughs> poor beer on her tits, yeah. But uh, I find women are shocked to see what it is. Where It's like a church where men are just staring in awe. They're not talking. They're very quiet. They just sip their beer, and women just put their like their asshole in the guy's face, and he's just sort of sipping his beer, just going. And a woman who takes good care of herself, her anus does look beautiful. Now, you say a man. If I was to put my ass in your face, you would need 100% of your willpower not to throw up. I've got hairs all around it. I probably have hemorrhoids. My bag hangs down like a turkey's gullet, and it's got sporadic hairs like a It's about a dying how you appreciate bodies, though, because bodies can be quite beautiful, and it's who how you sexualize bodies um and yeah certainly i've been in um female strip clubs like that where it is very reverent um but i'm not saying that that's not that's impossible with men i think that that is possible i don't think that we've as widespread developed that same aesthetic appreciation but, but so you're one of these people who believes that fat people are beautiful yeah they can be but that's, uh, can we at least agree it's unhealthy to weigh 500 pounds? Yes, of course. So when we glorify everyone and say everything is beautiful, it's your muffin top hanging over your, 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 your big gunt hanging over your, your belt is wonderful. You're actually encouraging obesity. What's the matter with beauty? And it's not like men are picky. All these standards are... I think it's about encouraging health and... That, that's what I try to encourage. I'm not trying to encourage, like when I talk to other people, um, I'm, I'm not trying to emphasize like one physical type or anything, but I try to talk to people about health. And um, some people are healthy at different sizes. And No, you're not healthy when you're fat. 500 pounds is a different story. But I'm saying there is 280 some... 280 ain't great either. <laughs> there is some physical variation, and it's not all going to be size 0 to 6. Um and just encouraging people having movement, healthy diets, that sort of thing. Like, that's what we need to focus on. And that will curtail some of that body shame as well. That is what I think some of the fat positive movement has been about. It's to try and curtail that shame that we experience so heavily here. Um, but I think if we shifted the dialogue to health rather than beauty standards. Well, that's on that you. That's, it's up to, from one woman to another, it's up to us to end female supremacy. Because as far as we're concerned, as men, we go plus size, down to skinny is fine with us. And a doctor would probably say plus size is a bit rich. So we're mm -hmm. actually nicer than doctors when it comes to standards. But mm -hmm. women are the ones who shit on you if your purse isn't Hermes. And women are the ones who buy these fashion magazines and insist on... On women that are kind of gross, they're so skinny, they look like 12-year-old boys. Women and gays have gotten together and created this beauty standard that we weren't consulted on. Yeah, I wasn't consulted either. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Um, well, I just feel like I don't understand why men get blamed for these unattainable beauty standards when we're fucking pigs. In fact, I know I mean, guys... I don't blame individual men. I'm, I blame the system that's... But the system is run by females and gays, the, the beauty Some fashion industry. Yeah. Yeah. We don't have f jocks. I did a sketch on this called If Dudes Ran Fashion. You don't have sports fans defining outfits. No. Or we no. just say, high heel jeans, high heel, high heel shoes, cut off jeans, fuck in a sweatshirt where you can see your tits. And we'd yeah. be good. We've got so much to tackle here today, and it's going incredibly well. Um, <laughs> one thing that confuses me about feminists, and I always think of Jezebel when I think about feminists, mm. uh, is their, their focus on jocks, their focus on rich, blonde men, their focus on CEOs, and the deafening silence, as my colleague puts it, when it comes to Islam. I mean, if I was a feminist, I wouldn't be putting up white supremacy stickers. I'd be putting up stickers saying, 
get Sharia out of America, or we don't want your burqas here, or honor killings are dishonorable. That's a good one. Yeah, I mean, I'm behind that one, but burqas and hijabs, people can wear that. That's a religious expression thing. That's not... Is it, though? Yeah. Okay, if the burqa is just religious ex expression and it's perfectly fine, why is it black polyester in the Middle East? Why are you in a bin bag, as Billy Conley puts it? Why isn't it flowing white gauze or a fresh cotton? It's clearly meant to punish the woman and make her suffer. Black polyester in the Middle East ain't comfy. And it impairs that. your vision. It's a form of oppression, but feminists in the West seem more concerned about high heel shoes, which women wear as a choice. We just had our military. I mean, I'm not concerned about high heel shoes, and I tend not to um, criticize people on their what they're wearing because I think what we wear is an expression of ourselves, our culture, and a whole variety but of factors. But a burqa is not a choice. It's illegal not to wear one in all over the Middle East. Sharia yeah. law dictates a woman cannot show her body. I'm not from that culture, so I would rather not tell them what to do right now in regards to that. That's what another liberal friend of mine said. He said, my, my area of expertise is America, so yeah. I don't get involved in other cultures. And, well, I, and that one in particular, I don't know very much about and um, have not had as many friendships and relationships with folks from that region. So I don't feel comfortable saying it much. But we've got 3 million Muslims in America today. We've got places like Dearborn, Michigan, which are basically fifth columns for Islam. Mm. So it is here in America. It is here. Mm. And in the UK, we just had a child pedophile ring going on that wasn't investigated by the police because they didn't want to appear racist. So mm. I think this sort of cultural relativism is really dangerous. Why are you f so focused on these rich white males who are essentially trying to get the economy going, trying to sell you stuff, trying to keep you happy because happy <laughs> keeps the economy going? I mean, Jack Welch, the CEO of GE, he doesn't want women getting raped. He doesn't have time for that. He's worried about the bottom line. He doesn't have time for racism either. If he's looking at a resume, okay, this is a new accountant. Oh, good. He's going to save us a quarter of a million dollars a year. In tax? Oh my God, he's that smart? And he's only asking for 150 k Well, the guy's a living profit machine. Of course I'm going to... Oh, he's a black man. It's about how they perpetuate the capitalist structure, though. I mean, sure, if you're going to support whatever this exec that you're using as an example is doing, then, um, yeah, they don't care what race as long as you're going to support those same ideals. Great. So that's but, isn't that freedom? But those same, no, those same ideals are creating unlivable jobs at the bottom level. They like are like what minimum wage? Minimum wage jobs. You're not supposed to raise a family at McDonald's. You may not be supposed to be, but there are too many people that that is their only option. Oh, because illegal aliens have crowded out the not market. just that. Well, 15 million illegals working cheap is surely affected. Oh yeah. The bottom sure. line. So I think if you're concerned about wages and the working class, you should be fighting illegal immigration. <laughs> they've driven down the wage gap. I mean, sorry, they've driven down the minimum wage. They've driven down wages in general. The biggest concern is the wealth gap, though. I mean, how much the top percent is making con in comparison to everybody else. Ah. That's... I do agree that CEOs make too much, but you remind yes. me of a Margaret Thatcher quote where she said, labor would, ra would rather have the wealth gap here where both are poorer than a gap like this where the, rich are rich where the poor are richer, but the gap is bigger. Would you rather have both down here than a big gap with the poor slightly higher? I think it would make for a healthier society. To be down here? To be closer to equal, yeah. And do you think the government's role is to regulate that and impose it on the society? To some extent. So you're a socialist? I wouldn't say that, but I believe in some socialist ideals. Have you ever been to the DMV? Yep. These are the people, these fucking bureaucrats with no interest in being there, these rude, lazy morons are going to be handling your justice. You're imparting your freedom and your liberty and your equality. You're saying, hey, shitheads, 
can you run my life, please? Not all government employees are. Yes, lazy. they are. No, they're not. That's why they're in the government. <laughs> Politicians are not. There are many different government jobs, and they are not just the DMV. No, There's... because they don't have regulation. They don't have the free market kicking them out. So incompetence abounds. In fact, it's encouraged. And they are all about getting more money, justifying their department, getting bigger next year. You know, my, my brother runs a, a brewery tour uh, in my hometown. It's 80 bucks. And they have to pay a fine now to a government regulation agency that uh, dispenses travel licenses. Because going from brewery to, to brewery is considered travel. They have to pay 25 grand now. They can't afford it, so they're just shutting down the tours. He wasn't making that much money on them anyway, but the government ruined it. Now, that institution was founded to protect people who were going to the Congo or somewhere crazy, and it said, hey, travel agent, give it, you need this license, and tell the government when these people go to these places so we can make sure they don't, we know if they're abducted or something. Mm -hmm. Of course, that doesn't happen anymore, or it happens incredibly rarely, maybe in right. Colombia. So this, this institution has to keep going. So now they just are attacking random brewery tours so they can have a fucking job. That's what happens when you say, government, regulate me. The free market will handle all this justice. You know, with Occupy Wall Street, you guys were running around saying, but more government, more government. You have more government, you end up with the USSR, you end up with a police state. We want less government. If you want less cops, you got to encourage more free market, more individual state power as opposed to this federal power. Obama more is your enemy. Power. Pardon? More community power. Yes. That's, well, that's not what... And that's, uh, that's not, I wouldn't say that's the same thing as free market and capitalism. But as, I mean, one thing that I support in reducing the number of cops is also encouraging the number of um, social organizations. Like, who do you call when your neighbor is assaulted? Like, or um, something is stolen? Like, well, yes. how are the ways that we can support our neighbors and our communities that is not just but calling the police? But you guys have like killed having... the community. First of all, you we abolished, have... yeah, liberals, <laughs> politically correct liberals, feminists, have abolished the community. How so? Well, one, you have encouraged single mothers by monetizing it. You've created a financial incentive to be, to ha be a single mom. So that destroyed the black family. Two, yeah, There is not that much incentive. Oh, yeah, there is. No, there's if, not. If you're dirt poor and lazy in the slums, it, you'd way rather have a check than go to work. So you say, sorry, get out of here, dude. You're slowing down my the, welfare The numbers check. of people that do that are so small. They're insignificant. 80% of blacks no. are born out of wedlock. 80% so. of blacks are born to single moms. That's because you guys incentivize it. But I'm not done. Atheism has also abolished the church, so we've mm -hmm. lost this sense of community that, that, that the church has. Mm -hmm. uh, this culture of fear. You're going to get raped. One in four people get raped. Men are going to kill you. Men are out there. There's evil guys out there. Has you think we're a... perpetuating the culture of fear? Yes. By what about s Fox News? Fo <laughs> Fox News perpetuates the culture have of fear. You've never watched Fox News. Oh. You've never watched an episode. Did you hear about this guy mm -hmm. in The weekend who said... I haven't watched it in a while, but I have watched it. Did you hear about this it. guy who said the wage gap is woman's choice on Hannity? I saw him snippet of that yeah did you see a snippet of that mm -hmm. do you remember the guy who said it vaguely he was a male model and uh he's a member of mensa really in interesting guy uh I, if i was to be gay i would probably fuck him I, I wouldn't be surprised if i've beaten him off before but this guy said that women choose to earn less and it sounds shocking like i don't want any money thanks but his point was actually pretty well researched and he was saying when there's a situation like, okay, guys, you and I work at Stelco. We got to stay all night to work on this proposal. We might not get it. My daughter has a piano recital. Your daughter has a piano recital. You are more likely, over the you know, course of millions of women, the female is more likely to say, I'm going to my daughter's piano recital. Sorry. I'm more likely to stay all night. That means that choice again and again and again eventually leads to me going up the ladder faster and making more money. Yeah. Different life priorities. Yeah. Now, I, the guy on Fox was saying that this is a good thing because it's God's way, nature's way of saying women are happier at home. I mean, if you take a female, a, a female chimp that's, and you put her right there, she can play with a truck or a stuffed animal. And you put a male chimp there, he can play with a truck or a stuffed animal. Invariably, they've done this with 800 different cases. The male chimps almost always go for the truck. And the female chimps almost always go for the stuffed animal and start stroking it and nurturing it. Yeah. So this yeah, there is something mothery that is in a lot of women. 
that so is let's glor- if we're, genetic. let's be feminist. Let's glorify the housewife. Let's glorify their choice to I'm, earn less. I'm all for glorifying the housewife and glorifying all the women and the choices that they make and how to live their lives. Great. So we're on the same page there. <laughs> yeah. So the wage gap is a myth. You believe that now? I don't completely believe that. I think that some of that plays a factor. That, that like how late women stay, how much time and energy they're putting towards their career development. But I think that there's also other factors that contribute to not earning the same as men. But I think that this feminism has sabotaged this natural instinct in women and made them feel like they're sellouts if they pursue that. And that goes back to what I was saying about the community. I, I do find that quite sad. We've created this culture of fear, this culture of women are men, and it's destroyed the community in a number of different ways. Another, th- another thing that's, that's destroyed the community is this public shaming of political correctness, like uh, Brenda Knight getting fired from Mozilla for donating to uh, uh, pro-family or someone say anti-gay marriage thing. This creates a culture of fear where people don't want to go outside. People don't want to talk to each other. They don't want to say, when everyone was making Polak jokes or saying seemingly racist stuff to each other, everyone was relaxed and they could communicate because it was laid back. When mm-hmm. you could tell a woman she was beautiful, wow, now you can't even, even the cat calls today are fucking pussy cat calls. They're like, hello, yo, you're so beautiful, God bless. What? What's That's wrong good. with that? <laughs> it's, it's pussy whip. You're supposed to say, that ass just ruined my day. Or I would fucking suck the dick. I would love to kiss the I, chair well, of the last guy who got to fuck you. I am nicer comments on the street and being kind to complete strangers. Um, I, I do support the not being so politically correct because I think it stops us from having a lot of really important conversations. And I think... We just need to have those conversations and let them be a bit messy because they are. Um, but college campuses and feminism don't let you say anything. We I just know. had a we had a comedian have to pay a twelve thousand dollar fine for calling some someone in the audience dykes. Yeah, I mean, I think that there are a lot of feminist communities that take a little bit far. Um, I mean, I I don't have the power to tell them not to, and I think that um, they need to do what they feel is right, but I think that it hinders a lot of conversation and a lot of development that could happen, a lot of understanding that could grow from more open conversations and not policing particular words. Feminism is all about policing particular words. It's all not about the oppression I these believe. days. Not it's all about, about the, not the feminism trivializing rape and trivializing housewives. I don't understand. In fact, it only seems to be about making women into men. Like uh, the big word now is badass and Charlize Theron is in Mad Max and she's mm-hmm. kicking ass and smoking cigars and I'm a woman. Yeah. That's not feminine. Every cartoon my kids watch, like uh, Big Hero, the men are driving the car do, 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 in a police chase and the little girl goes get out of there and she gets in the driver's seat you know it's same with wreck it ralph and she's kicking ass and taking names and young girls are watching this just going i'm a chimp i want to play with a stuffed animal why are you turning me into fucking <laughs> I, mad max I think, I think you can be both i think of you course can you can be both but be super the pendulum is swung the other way where feminists are saying be a badass get out of the kitchen um not feminism i'm Feminism, I believe in. I believe well, in a lot more balance. Well, that's what I don't understand. Balance. In 2015, so, now that you've ach- achieved perfect equality, perfect in fact, equality. <laughs> it's this pendulum has f- swung too far, and now it's it's men are garbage. Every woman, no matter how fat and ugly, is a fucking goddess. Now that the pendulum has swung that far, what's the point? Like, what's on your agenda? It's like being a fireman in a city with no fires. What's the fire? There are fires, and just because. Um, what you're paying attention to is perpetuating that and you you perceive that this is now equal it is not well tell me a fire Um, i'm genuinely interested tell me a fire um (laughs) i mean sexual assault is still an issue more men get raped than women again i didn't specify gender when i said sexual assault but that we're talking about feminism feminism yeah feminism is also dealing with sexual assault across genders so feminism, we need feminism because too many men are getting raped. Too many people are getting raped. That's part of it. Okay, that just, actually a- makes sense. We need feminism because more men are getting raped than women, and we need to bring that number down. We need to bring all numbers down around rape and sexual assault. Well, the cases of rape are plummeting over the past quarter century. All crime is going that. down. 
Okay, so, but then feminists should be outside prisons going, this is out of control. Stop prison rape. Stop prison rape. Leave men alone. Leave men al I cannot picture that. Yeah, well, I think that we, there should be more. Okay, addressing. so men getting raped is one fire that we need feminism for. Give me another one. Um, sexualization of women and beauty standards, and that that is the main... S women are sexually attractive. That's why we're here. Women need to stay sexually appealing because that's how we've made seven billion of us. Of course, but not at the expense extinct. of not listening to what they have to say and what they can c contribute to a society. That's a good point. I'll give you that. Here's something you should understand about men. We have evolved over all these years to be horny 24 hours a day and be thinking of sex 24 hours a day. It's it's a curse when you're in your teens because you are honestly on the verge of tears begging God to let you stop beating off. It's been six times. <laughs> Is there something I can eat to be less horny? I just And you're not getting laid because women don't put out anymore in, in teen years, at least if you're white and middle class. So you're sitting there praying to Jesus to touch one tit. Just let me touch a tit, please. And beating off six times. This goes on your whole life. So yes, you're right. When I'm talking to a woman, sex does pop into my head. When I'm at my friend's house and his mom serves me spaghetti, I'm thinking about her in lingerie. But, but you learn how to control it. Exactly. And that's about how you it's like being, an adult. it's like having a gnarled, twisted elephantitis fucking thalidomide arm. You just deal with this handicap. So it's like a little screen that's constantly playing in your mind. And you could be talking to a porn star who's nude. And well, you do it on the beach when you talk to him with a bikini who's asking you directions. You're like, I am about to get a boner, but uh, you go right down there and you see the hot dog stand. It's farther down there. Hmm. We don't. We can't fight to erase that. So the sexualization of women can't right, but change. You can, it's evolutionary. You can quiet how it influences we do. your actions. You've heard cat yeah. calls. Yo, you were so beautiful. There's, there's, the there's still cat calls really ever. nasty. There are still a lot of really nasty cat calls out there. Look, I've lived in Brooklyn for 15 years, and Montreal French people are even worse at this. And okay. well, by the way, here's another it. thing: women in the hood love being cat called. Black women Not love it. Not all of them know. Well, not all of them. And not all the time. I mean, there nothing are... Nothing is are, all. Nothing, it's not, we're not in Stalinist Russia. Nothing's all. The I mean, vast majority I, I live in a predominantly black neighborhood, and there I've witnessed some really nasty encounters, and I have witnessed women trying to protect themselves and figure out how to get out of the situation just because of aggressive catcalls. And, like, well, you're right. Black men can get out of control sometimes. It's but for the most part... pretty balanced in who's catcalling. Oh, really? Lots of black women running in fear from horny white men in, in bed -sty? <laughs> it does happen. Come on. But the cat calls are, are, have been um, castrated. So sexual objectification isn't an issue. And if you want to talk about unattainable beauty standards, we already covered that. That's gays and women who came up with that shit. But who's putting the, the money into it? Well, the free market is. If women want to spend all that money getting a pedicure, we don't even see your fucking feet. Can you imagine? I can't even conceive of a man saying, yeah, I went on a date with her and she hadn't had a pedicure in a while. Her toes were way too long. <laughs> Like, that's never happened. No, no. Women are bleaching their anus. You know how many men have gone, she's almost perfect, but her anus is brown. <laughs> so we're splitting up. Yeah. The only thing we have is remarkably obese, uh, doesn't pay any attention to anything about herself. And the one deal breaker, and I'm sorry, ladies, but you have deal breakers too, unbelievably thin hair. Like when you can see the whole skull. Okay. That's, that's, that's a deal breaker for that's you? That's a deal breaker. And mm -hmm. I don't want to get to a feminism where that's beautiful because it's haunting. I went to see Sin City once, the movie. The well, woman in front of me was like too. 30. Yeah, but men at least can shave it or something. And men aren't attractive in general. Some women can shave it too. Yeah, but women aren't attracted to attractive men. They see them as himbos. They're attracted to ambition. So if men want to be attractive, they have to develop their skills. And maybe this is all natural. Why are you trying to dismantle it? I'm not trying to dismantle all of it. I'm just trying to allow a little bit more in the way of options and expression. Yeah, l limitless options. The only fire we've been able to come up with is men getting raped. The sexual attraction thing doesn't matter. It doesn't, doesn't affect matter. them. Okay. Doesn't It doesn't affect us as women? I mean... Uh, okay, wait. We might be getting to something here. It doesn't affect us. What about our those... experience in a daily life and how we're able to... Um, well, give me an example. Way. Maybe I'm just incredibly naive. Um, like you're being judged when you walk down the street for your beauty? 
Yeah, absolutely. We're being judged every day for absolutely. our ambition. Your beauty is your best, uh, beside the ability to create life, it's one of your best features, so you get judged by it. Men's best feature is their ambition, their our ability to provide income. Okay. No, sorry. Woman's best feature is the magical gift of creating life. I'm glad okay. we got here. Okay. Well, and to that. modern feminism trivializes that. And I says, that. No, I think that's well, a, a lot of feminists a see, very major thing. see housewives who got married early as sellouts, and they see Charlize Theron in Mad Max as a fucking wicked chick. I think they're both pretty wicked chicks. No, I think Charlize is a fictional character in Mad Max. Well, obviously. <laughs> and I think Charlize herself, I don't think she had kids, so she fucked up. Not having kids is not a fuck up. Yeah, I, it is. I, still appreciate the magic and beauty of childbirth and i applaud all women who make that choice but the ones who don't do not make them screw ups that's true not necessarily plenty of women oh, i would say five percent of women were not meant to have kids would be shitty mothers and are better suited in the workforce i would say 95 percent would be much happier at home shaping lives at taking to their gift i wouldn't call it 95. Um, a good portion of that would be happy being able to balance both, being able to you do... You can't. Your ovaries... Do you believe me when I say this? That your ovaries at 30 are in an hourglass. The hourglass gets turned upside down. The sand is dripping of course up we run out. by 35. Yeah, it's not well, I have a lot of feminists tell me that's sexist. Oh, no, that's a biological I know doctors, doctors who get in shit for telling their patients that. Oh, I mean, that, I think that's a little bit silly. Okay. But, like, obviously, well, means, you though, cannot birth birth children for the your entire lifespan right. Thank like you. there is a so that means point if you that. want to have three kids you got to start getting serious in your late 20s about who you're dating right if that's a priority for you then yeah you definitely do okay so it's a priority for what do you want to go down to 80 percent because these women right now aren't doing it we have a 29 year old who works here who said to me i don't want kids and she's positive. And I, I find that with, when I talk to 20-somethings, without exception, they say they don't want kids. They say housewives are gross. By the way, a little side I thing. I've noticed young girls don't cook anymore. I, all the millennials I, I know, the, the man cooks. And their homes are a fucking I cook all the time, style. and I've seen a lot of women who cook. I've okay. definitely been Can I ask how old you are? I just turned 30. Okay, well, women your age and younger are cooking less and less they're cleaning less and less but they're not replacing it with anything they're doing stupid pr marketing jobs it seems like feminism has said women you're freed from the kitchen and then it took them out of the frying pan into the fire and they're just sitting in a filthy apartment eating takeout food getting used and abused by men i've always said new york city is an elephant's graveyard for ovaries because women come here thinking it's empowered to get fucked by tons of guys and then thrown in the trash <laughs> It's, that's the thing about all this feminism. Story. Men win. With free love and bra burning, we got tons of sex and jiggly tits. And with Charlie's Theron and this badass chick, it's a male construct. The white male patriarchy created Charlie's. I know. They created yeah. Kick-Ass too. That was for white nerds to jerk off to. It's not empowering mm -hmm. for a woman. It's not empowering for women to dry, let her ovaries dry up. It's not empowering for women to be treated like a fucking colostomy bag for cum. No, definitely not. But it's empowering to be able to make decisions about your own body and sexuality. Certainly. And Who can't I mean, I make think decisions? That, Who is being denied this decision? Um, there are women that still don't understand their own bodies and their own sexuality that are late into life, that, that are in their 20s, in their 30s. They, I don't know what that means, that don't understand their bodies. They don't masturbate enough? Um, they, well, I, that would be a piece of it, but yeah, they're not making their own decision. America, American Apparel sells the Hitachi magic wand on the counter in bulk. I mean, women weren't even allowed to call it vibrators a generation ago. It was a massage tool. Now you go, there's a sex store every fucking 20 feet. You can get the pearl <laughs> rabbit chicks to keep them in their purses. Shit, yeah. half the time they have one in them right now. <laughs> That's not true. No, but it, it, it does happen. You do get those ones that stay up there and it takes like 20 hours to get an orgasm. You just be, you know, having your cob salad and going, oh. <laughs> 20 hours. And uh, so maybe, maybe they these, have a whole bunch of orgasms in 20 are, hours. The only women in this country who are not t over enjoying <laughs> their sexuality are Amish and Muslim 
And I'm not going to say Christian because they end up getting married and have a bunch of kids. So if you're really concerned about sexuality, why wouldn't you be directing it towards the Hasidic Jew community, for example? They're not exploring their bodies. You should be that giving, be true, you should be in, in South Williamsburg handing out dildos to Hasidic Jewish girls of over 18. I mean, culturally, it's not really my place to do that because they have their own understanding. It's a little bit different. Okay, so, so far, all I have is men in prison getting raped. I don't understand why women's sexual, women aren't sexual enough. They've got every STD under the sun. Ovarian cancer is going through the roof because they've all had venereal warts on their cervix. Um, We've think... spread, oral herpes doesn't exist anymore because there's so much 69ing going on that oral and, and uh, genital have, have merged. I, I think that a big fault of that is our safer sex education, that that has fallen. So, yeah, we've had an increase in women having more sex earlier, possibly, um, but we're not learning about safe sex practices. We're not learning how to talk about sex, how to ask for what we want and need and permission. We're, we're having sex, certainly, but a lot of those conversations still aren't coming to play in sexual encounters. Yeah, because women don't like that. They're uncomfortable. They don't know how to have No, them. they like being dominated in bed. Straight women, at least. I'm, I'm not talking about dominance. I'm not talking about dom-sub stuff. I'm talking about simply being able to communicate about safe sex practices, about what you want and don't want in no, bed. No, that's gross. That, you're ruining... See, you guys ruined the community. Now you're ruining sex. I used that's to... That's not ruining sex. Yes, that's being it is. able to Permission express is, your needs. is a turnoff. I, but it's I used to go a, your oh. way. When I was in college, I tried the whole... Can I put my hand here? Can I put my hand here? Their pussies would be well, as dry as the Sahara Desert. There's then I started, to that. One day I was just fucking a girl and I said, who's your daddy? And she was started writhing in ecstasy and I went, okay, let's pursue this vein. And then next thing you know, I'm choking them, plugging their nose when I fuck their mouths, calling them whores, no, slapping them. And I didn't get more laid than when I started to become a fucking domineering asshole. I, would get, I got an email once that said, thank you for raping me last night. Heterosexual sex is a, like a snake grabbing the mouse, and if you've ever seen it, when it sinks its fangs into the mouse, and the mouse just sort of goes, ah. That's what women like. They want a snake to go, to take over. They don't want, okay, they, first of all, some, I lick my anus licked, and then that's for about one minute, and then go work on my clit, and then but, do in and out, and in and out. But I mean, that way of talking about sex is a misconception. What I mean about being able to express your needs is, generally speaking, and being able to say you don't like something when it's happening, being able to stop things, being able to have some control over the situation. And some of, sometimes that is requesting that somebody dom you and take over and be forceful in how they're having sex with you. But sometimes it's not. And Liberating, having the ability to say that and have it heard, that's something there that... There is no demand for your supply here. Telling, teaching women to say what they want in sex and have nice permission-based sex is like helping blacks permission, to camp. Permission-based sex to the can hood be just say, as nasty and Hi, I'm here to do a seminar about camping. Here's a free tent. That tent is going to rot. Women don't want that. Permission-based sex can still be super raunchy and <laughs> super juicy. Okay, I want you to break in here and violate me and then um, ask me yeah. what I want next. You don't. You can go over that beforehand. You can Good sex set, set it is up right on the verge of this is going to court. If you want, you're like Icarus. For you, you want maybe. to fly for close you, to the sun, but, but not. But not for everybody. And I've even had women, one time this woman was like, Jewish women especially seem particularly raunchy, and she was like, oh, fuck me, fuck me, I'm your fucking whore, I'm human garbage. And I'm like, you're my slut, you're my, I used to say, make them say, uh, but, I'm but your part property, of that, Gavin McInnes. That and then when talk, she was the, done. Part of that dirty talk is creating consent. It's like, I'm, I'm doing right, this so to establish. Right, so don't meddle with it. It's like art. Don't dabble in there. It's, it's like getting in, involved in people's dreams and saying, we need uh, women to dream of being housewives less when they're asleep. Like this, sex is doing great. Not for everybody. So the agenda of feminism today is to have women enjoy sex more. Being able to communicate about one's needs and have that heard is a piece of it. I, um, I think that's different than enjoying sex, and I think that's different than what you've been talking about. Um, certainly we've had sex, certainly... You, you and I have had sex? People How have wasted sex? were we? No. I don't even remember. <laughs> we have not had sex. Oh, that's too bad. Um, Nor is it going to happen. 
We'll see. Next week, we'll be coming back and having live sex on Ooh. the table. Uh, we would like that people to call Heather in. Heather will not be part of. Give <laughs> comments. Uh, no, Heather, I really appreciate you coming in. I'm sorry we don't agree on anything, but uh, it makes for great radio to have two people disagree. <laughs> and I genuinely appreciate people who are politically active, as long as they're not meddling in people's lives. And I think shaming people or censoring people not into shame. is shame a real is issue with feminism. You know, contacting their employers and, and uh, harassing them at home, publishing their addresses is a real stain on any kind of political discourse. And I'm glad to hear you're not part of it. Yeah, I'm not a fan of shame and I support messy conversations because that's the only way things move forward. See, that put a sexual image in my head when you said messy, but I put that away in a yeah, little category. It's locked. Sometimes you have to add a little sexual tone in order for people to actually listen. Okay, now too. you said sex and I have a boner. Okay, we're going to have to stop. This is getting right. too hot. Thanks for coming, Heather. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Bye. Uh, can we at least agree it's unhealthy to weigh 500 pounds? Yes, of course. So when we glorify everyone and say everything is beautiful, it's your muffin top hanging over your, 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 your big gunt hanging over your, your belt is wonderful. You're actually encouraging obesity. What's the matter with beauty? And it's not like men are picky. All these standards are... I think it's about encouraging health. And that, that's what I try to encourage. I'm not trying to encourage... Like when I talk to other people, um, I'm, I'm not trying to emphasize like one physical type or anything, but I try to talk to people about health. And um, some people are healthy at different sizes. And No, you're not healthy when you're fat. 500 pounds is a different story, but I'm saying there is some... 280 ain't great either. <laughs> there is some physical variation, and it's not all going to be size 0 to 6. Um, and just encouraging people having movement, healthy diets, that sort of thing. Like That's what we need to focus on, and that will curtail some of that body shame as well. That is what I think some of the fat positive movement has been about. It's to try and curtail that shame that we experience so heavily here. Um, but I think if we shifted the dialogue to health rather than beauty standards. Well, that's on you. That's, it's up to, from one woman to another, <laughs> it's up to us to end female supremacy. Because as far as we're concerned, as men, we go plus size, down to skinny is fine with us. And a doctor would probably say plus size is a bit rich. So we're mm -hmm. actually nicer than doctors when it comes to standards. But mm -hmm. women are the ones who shit on you if your purse isn't Hermes and women are the ones who buy these fashion magazines and insist on on women that are kind of gross they're so skinny they look like 12 year old boys women and gays have gotten together and created this beauty standard that we weren't consulted on yeah I wasn't consulted either <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one um, well I just feel like I don't understand why men get blamed for these unattainable beauty standards when we're fucking pigs in fact i know I mean, guys I, I don't blame individual men i'm i blame the system that's but the system is run and by females and gays the the beauty fashion them, industry like, yeah. yeah we don't yeah. have f a jocks i did a sketch on this called if dudes ran fashion you don't have sports fans defining outfits no or we no. just say high heel jeans high heel shoes cut off jeans fuck in a sweatshirt where you can see your tits and we'd yeah. be good We've got so much to tackle here today, and it's going incredibly well. Um, <laughs> one thing that confuses me about feminists, and I always think of Jezebel when I think about feminists, mm. uh, is their, their focus on jocks, their focus on rich blonde men, their focus on CEOs, and the deafening silence, as my colleague puts it, when it comes to Islam. I mean, if I was a feminist, I wouldn't be putting up white supremacy stickers. I'd be putting up stickers saying, get Sharia out of America, or we don't want your burqas here, or honor killings are dishonorable. That's a good one. Yeah. I mean, I'm behind that one, but burqas and hijabs, people can wear that. That's a religious expression thing. That's not... Is it, though? Yeah. Okay. If the burqa is just religious ex expression and it's perfectly fine, why is it black polyester in the Middle East? Why are you in a bin bag, as Billy Conley puts it? Why isn't it flowing white gauze or a fresh cotton? It's clearly meant to punish the woman and make her suffer. Black polyester in the Middle East ain't comfy. 
and it impairs that. your vision, it's a form of oppression. But feminists in the West seem more concerned about high heel shoes, which women wear as a choice. We just had our military. I mean, I'm not concerned about high heel shoes, and I tend not to um, criticize people on their what they're wearing because I think what we wear is an expression of ourselves, our culture, and whole variety but of factors. But a burqa is not a choice. It's illegal not to wear one in all over the Middle East. Sharia yeah. law dictates a woman cannot show her body. I'm not from that culture, so I would rather not tell them what to do right now in regards to that. That's what another liberal friend of mine said. He said, my, my area of expertise is America, so yeah. I don't get involved in other cultures. Uh, well, I, and that one in particular, I don't know very much about and um, have not had as many friendships and relationships with folks from that region. So I don't feel comfortable saying it much. But we've got 3 million Muslims in America today. We've got places like Dearborn, Michigan, which are basically fifth columns for Islam. Mm. So it is here in America. It is here. Mm. And in the UK, we just had a child pedophile ring going on that wasn't investigated by the police because they didn't want to appear racist. So mm. I think this sort of cultural relativism is really dangerous. Why are you f so focused on these rich white males who are essentially trying to get the economy going, trying to sell you stuff, trying to keep you happy? Because happy <laughs> keeps the European countries with a higher density of whites, like Northern Europe. Uh, that's one way to phrase it, I guess. You don't mean Turkey. <laughs> no. You don't mean Eastern Europe no. with the communists. So the only time you can come up with a system that's better than America, it's a country that's more white than America. I don't I, understand. I don't, I don't know what to say to that. So, like, I I just want to know where the data is that supports this universe of white supremacy. Is it because whites are doing well? <laughs> um, that makes it sound like whites are doing well because um, they earned it and they did all the right things, rather than we have built this country on a system for hundreds of years that that allows whites to do well. We have generations that have supported our success and we have taken away support from communities of color so that is why communities of color are not doing well in america it's not because white people are doing so well for themselves we we're just such a great people i mean i'm not so the reason whites are, are doing well is because we cheated yeah but if you look at the data of asians for example you will find way more Asian privilege than there is white privilege. Asians make way more money than whites. They're way more educated than whites. They are less likely to experience any kind of crime than whites are. They're less likely to die at work than whites are. I mean, the list goes on. Yeah, they suffer from a different sort of um, racial stereotyping. Well, they don't suffer. They're kicking her ass. Asian, everything you can say about white privilege is more true with Asian privilege. No one grabs their it still purse when it... pigeonholes them. Pardon? It still pigeonholes them. Pigeonholes them as successful? I don't think anyone minds being pigeonholed like that. Hey, Mr. No, successful, why don't you go drive a nice car? It's not near as harmful as how black folks are stereotyped, certainly. Okay, so uh, why don't you start at the top then and let's try to dismantle Asian privilege. Asian privilege, I wouldn't call it Asian privilege. Well, it fits all the criteria of white male privilege. What do you mean by that? They get better jobs. They get better educations. They don't. No one sees them as threatening. Uh, everything that you can say that whites mm. cheated to get is p more prevalent in an Asian society. Okay, let's drop yeah. that. I guess it's not going anywhere. <laughs> uh, but that reminds me of when people say that we live in a sex. Would you say we live in a sexist society? Yeah. Um, I don't understand that. Why not? Well. Men are more likely to die on the job. They're more likely to commit suicide. They're more likely to get beat up. They're more likely to get raped. Uh, they're more likely to have their opinions valued, to be able to have powerful positions and not have their bodies be the primary subject whenever they are well-known and doing trying to do something with their lives. Well, that's a good point, finally. Uh, yeah, we do analyze the beauty of women quite often, but... That's a meter that we've been using for a quarter of a million years to develop attraction. I mean, women grew tits because they were, we started to walk upright 
and they said, I gotta attract men to my front. Yes. I'm gonna put an ass on my chest. Also to feed children. Right, but you don't need big tits to feed children. No. Uh, Genetic variation. So attraction is an integral part of it. And when you're attractive, it shows that you care. I mean, you've adorned yourself to yep. be attractive. Fashion is one of my forms of expression. And women are better at beauty than men. Men are beautiful. Have you seen a bag? <laughs> I, men can be beautiful, certainly. I was I've seen a, them adorned quite well. I was talking about this on another show, but I was at a strip club, and I find strip clubs to be a real sort of a cathedral of, of worship for women. It's seen as a sexist place, and I think when women go there, they think everyone's going to be going, ha, 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 look at that fucking naked bitch. Ha, ha, poor beer on her tits, yeah. But uh, I find women are shocked to see what it is. Where It's like a church where men are just staring in awe. They're not talking. They're very quiet. They just sip their beer, and women just put their, like, their asshole in the guy's face, and he's just sort of sipping his beer, just going. And a woman who takes good care of herself, her anus does look beautiful. Now, you say a man. If I was to put my ass in your face, you would need 100% of your willpower not to throw up. I've got hairs all around it. I probably have hemorrhoids. My bag hangs down like a turkey's gullet. And it's got sporadic hairs like a It's about a how you appreciate bodies, though, because bodies can be quite beautiful. And it's who... It's how you sexualize bodies. Um, and, yeah, certainly I've been in um, female strip clubs like that where it is very reverent. Um, but I'm not saying that that's, not Im that's impossible with men. I think that that is possible. I don't think that we've as widespread developed that same aesthetic appreciation. But, but So you're one of these people who believes that fat people are beautiful. Yeah, they can be. But that's... Difference was just normal, and they learned whiteness as part of difference rather than as a power structure. So that in America do. today, everyone is taught that white is the best, and if you're not white, you suck. In subtle ways, yeah. I don't think most people could articulate that. That's not something that it's most systemic, people are... systemic, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love that word. Uh, but if you look at college campuses today, for example, it seems like the opposite is happening, and everything is about white maleness is evil, and the white male patriarchy is bad. I mean, I would... It looks to me like the opposite brainwashing is going on on college campuses. And if you look at the politically correct left, uh, the New York Times, and everyone but Fox, really, seems to be pushing people of color. Like, look at hands up, don't shoot. Yeah. That exploded, but he didn't have his hands up. Did he? Who were you talking Mike about? Mike Brown. Um, there's been multiple perspectives on what happened there. I won't really say so, for sure one way or the, or the other. Um, oh, so you but, still think he had his hands up? I'm, I'm not going to state an opinion about that. Um, okay. But Because I don't, I don't think that's the important part of what's happened then or what happened, what's happened around so the, the country. So the truth isn't irrelevant. It's more about the message. I That's a tricky statement. <laughs> I don't understand why we don't care about the details. We just love the narrative so much. We just sort of plow through what actually happened. Um, when you nitpick what somebody did as a way to justify the violence committed on them, then you're blaming the victim in that sense. Um, and you're not looking at... So it's blaming the victim to notice that he didn't have his hands up? I'm not, I'm not saying that specifically. Oh, okay. I, I'm just commenting on the practice of nitpicking what somebody did or didn't do. I see the same thing around rape victims. Is like If you had just done X, Y, and Z, then this wouldn't have happened to you. If you had just held your hands up, if you had just been a little bit less threatening of a black person, then you wouldn't have been murdered. But yeah. it's more about the systemic racism around it and the violence committed on those communities and how we perceive black maleness right. as threatening. Well, no matter what he's doing, it's perceived as threatening. But uh, my understanding with rape is we're pretty fucking hard on rapists. When we catch them, they go to jail for 15 years. And when I think of... But we have a pretty heavy burden of proof as well. And oftentimes it's one person against the other. And if the, the rapist has more power, then that adds other extra... Oh, so if the rapist is a white male, he can usually get out of it? Um, not always, no. But when there's more power involved, more influence, resources than the victim, then it is harder to get a conviction. I understand what you're saying. I'm just having trouble thinking of examples. Like when I think of, when you say 
hands up, don't shoot. It doesn't matter if he had his hands up or not. But I just see that whole thing as fraud. I mean, Michael Brown reached for the gun, reached into the car, and he got shot. He had a, he was arrogant, and he thought he could beat up cops. Or with Trayvon, we took that to court. We saw that he was beating up George Zimmerman after several warnings, but people still run with the narrative, with the hood up. And when you use rape as an example, I think of other rape frauds, like Mattress Girl, like the UVA of, hoax. Of course there's been people who falsely claim um, that they've been abused in various ways, but that is a distraction from the real people who have suffered but I would issues. argue the opposite. I think these cases trivialize the real people who have suffered and then mock them almost. I mean, we're at a point now where they say one in four women will experience sexual assault in college. Mm -hmm. That's clearly a myth. No, it's not. But one in four is, is that you don't have that for any other crime in the world. Like you go to a ride in Detroit, there's not one in have four you, have you acts of vandalism. Have you been a woman before? Have, have I you, what? Have you been a woman before? Have you experienced what it's like to be a woman in this world and talk to other women without the presence of males? Because when there are no males around, you hear these stories. You hear that there are one in four, that this is not a made up statistic. One in four is in, to of get that statistic insane. Of course up it's insane. to that, they've included drunk sex and sex that you regret afterwards. I think 90% of my sex is drunk sex. Am I a rapist now? They just had a woman who was at, trying to join the Mile High Club. She was having sex in a mm -hmm. plane. She was shit-faced. And when they, they arrested her, they took her down, they arrested both of them, and she was trying to kick the shit out of the, the cops, the whatever, airline security. Uh, if having sex drunk is rape, then she should have been free and that guy should have been prosecuted. I don't, I don't know anything about that case. But, yeah, but um, just I mean, treat it as a hypothetical then. <laughs> uh, alcohol does inhibit your ability to say yes, and there are many instances where uh, men and other abusers have used that to their advantage. Right. Okay. So. Well, if we're talking about college campus, then why wouldn't these women go to the police? Like, are you familiar with Mattress Girl? Mm-hmm. Well, do you? What do you think happened there in reality? Um, I take her experience for it, that um, there were substances involved and she was non-consensually forced to have sex. Well, she was having, her contention is she was having nice vaginal sex and then he put it in her ass and she said, stop. Yeah. But afterwards, the police, she went to the police with this and they saw her texts and they saw her basically stalking him afterwards saying, I want you to fuck me in the ass and uh, let's go on a date. I want to see you again. I mean, Tons and tons of Facebook messages and texts. Does that refute her story? Um, I think that we deal with trauma in very different ways. And sometimes that anger comes out in bizarre situations like that, um, where you think it'll be better if you take it out on this person and by harassing them with strange text messages. Um, I mean, she was also young, and she was trying to deal with her emotional world in many different ways at once. I, I, the way you're clinging to this narrative, it reminds me of a, a study that said when people are confronted with data that contradicts their beliefs, they become mm. more steadfast in their mm. beliefs. Yeah, no, I've noticed that. Well. I mean, this guy is suing the school. <laughs> Women do not court their rapists. They don't say, fuck me in the ass after they've been anally raped. They go to court. They get the police to arrest this guy. She's clearly a liar. But because people like you empower her, they end up running with this lie. And it makes me mad as a, more of a feminist than most feminists because it trivializes the woman who was attacked with a knife in an alleyway by a guy and but, raped I and mean, had to I go on that, AIDS medication after. Right. Those instances are horrifying. But what I, my issue with um, taking apart her story a bunch is that most instances of rape and sexual assault are with somebody you know. It's with somebody you went on a date with. It has lots of gray lines. It's not a stranger on the street. Most of the time it's somebody already in your life who well, has crossed that boundary. So and so it gets a real, really sticky when you start tearing, taking apart the actual events. And yeah, I think- No, I, it doesn't. I think, That's I think called after, justice, Heather. I think after an assault, it is quite questionable to send messages asking for anal sex, yeah, but I would also say that like devaluing somebody's no mid sex is often is is frequent, and um, 
and it just it gets tricky when you know somebody and when you are consenting to part of the the interaction but, but not all of we it. You can't question these these vic victims. That's what justice is. Why not questioning the victim? We've ruined this guy's life. That's why he's suing the school. I mean, we had a case recently where a woman decided, "You look like someone who raped me, so I want you out of here." And he had to curtail his behavior in, in campus. Yeah. Is that good? No. <laughs> or with the UVA <laughs> hoax, I'm reading the story, and before it exploded, I go, I go, wait a minute. They threw her down on a glass coffee table and then raped her amongst the shards. Everyone would have been shredded. Mm -hmm. But the story has so much momentum because people love these evil white male. They love the shitting on the white supremacy that they just run with it. And it's on the front page of the Rolling Stone. Mattress Girl is on the front page of New York Mag. It seems mm -hmm. like there's this massive demand for rapists that's not being met. And if you look at the data... Well, I'm afraid blacks are raping wildly disproportionately to their representation in the population. I mean, if you look at the number of white men who rape black women and the number of black men who rape white women, it's startling. What are those numbers? Do you have them? Uh, I don't have them on me, but the, the white men who rape white women is so inconsequential, it's hard to quantify. It's something like eight. <laughs> And then the black men who rape white women is in the hundreds. And that may be based on who's reporting, because... I, I think you would prefer it if it was the other way around, because it would fit your sort of plantation narrative. <laughs> I'm not trying to make it fit a plantation narrative. Well, um, I just don't understand why but I, someone I, who cares about rape can ignore statistics. I know it's like you pick and choose. As, as a white woman who's talked to many other white women and is a survivor myself, um, that it, they, white women are often more likely to report a black assault. They are more likely to highlight that violence and see that as violence. Whereas oftentimes the, this isn't coming out quite how I want it to right now. So, so but. white woman will get, Raped by a black man, they'll freak out and make sure it gets on the books, but they'll get raped by a UVA uh, jock with blonde hair and go, that wasn't really rape, or no one would believe me, or he's too powerful. Is that where we're at? <laughs> That's a psychotic world you've painted. I mean, <laughs> It is close, though. No, it I'm... ain't. Mm. No, it ain't. Mm. You see, the dominant narrative is your sticker. The dominant narrative in America is white people are evil, white people suck, we should be ashamed of ourselves. And I don't think we, we should are, be ashamed of ourselves. I think that we should take responsibility for the system that we've created. The best system in the world? Oh, we do not have the best system Who in the world. Who has a better system? <laughs> there are many European countries that have are much better off oh, than us. Oh, you mean like the... We I'm outside after their festival talk. All I are badges in their protest wall. Hello, folks. Welcome back to Free Speech. We're here at the Stand Up New York Labs in the glorious Upper West Side with all the rich people. And we're here with another incredibly rich, rich billionaire heir Definitely. to the Johnson & Johnson throne. And she just pulled so in much a, money, I'm just... a Lamborghini. And you just you let yeah. that get towed? You don't care where you park? I can get another one anytime. It's fine. Uh, I am just kidding. Uh, I'm here with a politically active artist, Heather Marie Scholl. I don't know this woman at all. Uh, I saw her on the street uh, near my house. She was putting up this sticker, and it says, It's from one white person to another. It's on us to end white supremacy. I thought that was very interesting, and uh, saw her at a coffee shop and said, I'd love to have you on the show to explain the sort of mentality behind the sticker. And here she is. So... Heather Mary? Is it Heather Mary or Heather Marie? Heather Marie. Heather Marie. I mean, I just go by Heather, but Let's do written, Heather. I do Heather Marie. What's your ethnic background? Is there any Scottish in there? Um, no, your biggest ones I know are German and, uh, and Irish. German and Irish, huh? English. Yeah. Heather always makes me think of the, the hills of Scotland and the fucking Heather. <laughs> the beautiful My folks purple always, Heather. I, I do like some Heather. But okay, okay, so let's stop horsing around and get down to brass tacks. What does it mean? What, how do we end white supremacy? Well, first of all, what is the white supremacy you're talking about? White supremacy infiltrates every part of our lives. Um, I tend to use that term rather than racism because racism is really just white supremacy. It's the elevation of white characteristics and the normalization of our experience um, 
and our lives. And can black people be racist? Um, I would say that people of color can be supporters of white supremacist ideas. Okay. What so. if what if uh, black people don't like Chinese people? Um, people have biases all over, and some of that is because of the biased society that we're raised in. Um, what I really consider white supremacy and structural racism is the fact that there is power behind it. Oh, yes, okay. you can be biased against a group of people, but do you have influence, power and influence over how their lives are lived on a regular basis? Okay, so it's about power. So whites mm -hmm. are really the only racists because they're the only ones powerful enough to do anything about it, like not give a black guy a job. Black people can United hate States. white people, but they can't do anything about it. Not really, no. Don't they kill them en masse? <laughs> en masse? No. No. That is uh, one of the great myths that we've created oh, about okay. how often black folks kill white folks. How often do they kill white folks? Um, I don't have the numbers, but I believe I read recently it was somewhere around 10 to 15 percent of murders committed by black folks are white. Well, then what are all the murders? What are most murders with blacks? Most mur well, most murders are white on white. Right, just because of the numbers, the demographics yeah. of the country. Yeah, of course. But how many murders, do you know, have a rough idea of how many blacks kill other blacks? I don't have those numbers. I think it's 6,000 a year. I mean, there's one a day in, in East New York. Know. Anyway, sorry. I mean, that's not... So I thought it was interesting, though, for a second there, you were saying, I heard uh, that a lot of times when people of color are, uh, have a bias towards a group. It's actually white people's fault because they're living in this country that is so racist, they end up picking mm -hmm. up these racist traits. Of course, yeah. So when blacks I mean, are racist, it's because whites have brainwashed them into being racist. Yeah, I mean, that's the structure of our society. And um, I mean, I think about beauty standards a lot just because I am a fashion and aesthetic type person. And um, so often you see the elevation of white beauty, like white female beauty and um, people of all races suffer from that. I see. So that's why when, when black women straighten their hair, of course, they're yeah. trying to be white. I would not put it in that, those terms, but um, they're suffering from a beauty standard that is white-centered. I see. But they seem to do that all over the world. I mean, even in Africa, you see every woman Well, some of it is it. there is a long tradition um, in African and African American culture that hair is a form of art and that is a form of self-expression and that has gone on for a very long time. So it's part of that. But um, then the, the white beauty standards also play a role. So it's not possible that long blonde hair is just more aesthetically appealing than a no. little fro? No. Like if a we've, Martian we've landed here <laughs> and he was looking at, a, at you know, uh, Bill Cosby's wife, and he was looking at Farrah Fawcett. He, he would, would be say, fascinated by the difference. And he would say, and both. most, most, if you don't, if you take away um, the power structure, then it's simply about being fascinated by difference. And there, there's nothing wrong with being fascinated by other cultures and differences. And I've um, read some stories of people who had that experience growing up that they lived in places other than the United States, um, and in communities where 